in any moment now. Baltimore City. Good morning, everybody. What's up? What is up? Welcome back for those that are awake or haven't slept or on the other side of the world somewhere. Um, <clears throat> apparently, there was this bridge collapse that happened. I will show you. Um, well, th this is some live feed over the thing, too. But for those that missed it, this is posted on the news channel. I, I, I was kind of shocked by this a bit. They're saying a uh, mass casualty event. This cargo ship. From what I was reading in the comments, apparently, like, you see it right here to the left. Oh, dang. I heard the ship was having problems. I'm not exactly too sure, but you can see the, the ship hit the column. How the hell does this happen? I think the ship had problems. Somebody had said, I don't know if it's true, that the ship had lost power before hitting. <clears throat> um, there was some re a really good comment section. There was even this guy that commented on one of the videos, and he said... I'm a trucker and I just had a detour. I'm so happy I spent an extra six minutes this morning looking for breakfast. I was supposed to be on that bridge. They said there's at least like seven people in the water, maybe more, probably up to 20. There's going to be a press conference soon, actually. That's why I got on. Insane to see something like that in our day and age. You would have thought it with technology and. Boats go under that all the time. Let's see something here. Oh. So crazy, crazy to see. Almost like out of a movie. So right now they're they're waiting for this press conference to happen. It's being dubbed a mass casualty event. This is in Baltimore. Baltimore collapse. A portion of Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore collapses after a large boat collided with it. They also sent like this picture I thought was really good. Let's see it over here. Okay, which one is going on? Oh. Where's that coming from? Oh, here. Got news. This one kind of almost looks a little bit better, I think. I think a lot of people are still sleeping too. Maybe just a little bit before some people get up and go, get ready for work. Morning, good morning. Ah, Phoenix rising. That's crazy. At this time in the morning, nobody was expecting something like this to happen. This has been for a few hours, I think, now. A large container ship struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge, causing a significant parts of it to collapse. Wow. Incredible. 
Savage Beats, man, how you doing? Thank you for the 20 says, what's good? What's good, fam? Don't get brand new since Ack <laughs> slid in the stream yesterday. Crazy with dude's video. Hashtag take that, take that. Yeah, I, I'm gonna have to clip that later. I haven't saved. Need to get a little bit of caffeine in me. Good morning. Let's see if they have any uh, broadcastify stuff too going on. Wow. Three to four cars went in, and twenty people missing. Okay, everybody's listening to Baltimore Fire. Let's put them on. Let's check out what the scanner is saying. I'm about to get myself some coffee in a minute. I say coffee, but really pre-workout. I don't know what I'm talking about. The Jeep Celebration event is going... I guess I gotta upgrade this. Let me do that real quick. Three hundred and sixty days. Oh, expire. That's why. Okay, we yeah, renew this crap. Let me just get it over with right now. Ask me for my card info. Oh, the lights start come out. Starting to be able to see more. Is that the cargo ship? Oh, they're getting ready for a press conference too. Okay. I guess what I'll do is I'll put the pressure on the side. That, what a sight to see. That is crazy. Wow. Let me get the other screen going. Good morning, man. Rise and shine to the crazy ass situation. I'm going to get the scanner here in a second, too. How to situate this count crap. Good now, I think I'm good. Let's li listen in. Oh, yeah. Oh, you think? Okay. Um, maybe I should just keep the microphone here, right? This is just a cut, a cut shot, anyways. There we go. Lower the helicopter. Let's get the feed going. Play it live. Savage. Engine 46, Nando 28, Versailles, Medical Warren 29 82. 5026 Denmore Avenue, Apartment 3, between West Garrison Avenue and Spalding Avenue. 24 year old male, hemorrhage. Engine 46, 
number 28 or so, medical line 29-82, 5026 Denmore Avenue, apartment 3 for the hemorrhage, 21 Delta 4 response, 612. Press conference coming. I think they're waiting for some more daylight. That's the cargo ship on the screen. Let's see what else they're saying on Twitter about this. for Baltimore. Let me see what they're saying on Twitter. Power loss. Oh, so there's some video they're showing. We need more than just praying for Baltimore. What we need is quick rescue from the government, effective measures to prevent this from happening again. A quick solid breakdown from an apparent multiple power failures on the dolly ahead of impact with Francis Scott Bridge in Baltimore. All right, so they're saying this thing. I'm going to show you here in a second. Check this out. Go ahead, Commander. On the top left, I mean the middle left. We're going to hold this assignment with engine 52, engine 36 in truck 10. Engine 52 is going to take over command and they're going to write the card. The whole bo cargo boat loses power, apparently. And I read somewhere in, the, in uh, one of the comment sections that then, then the generators have to kick in, which takes a bit of time. Hold box hold 52 dash 50 engine 52 engine 36 truck 10 will handle engine 52 will be assuming Clifton Avenue command 1623. Oh smoke too! You see that? You see? So we get the boats coming. Then we get the power loss. Look at all those cars. And I, I couldn't see it in the other video, but yeah, this this car's going back and forth. Ooh. Thick smoke coming out of the cargo boat. Power loss number two. So there's two power loss. See, now it has, like, power. Maybe that's a generator. I don't know. But then it power loss number two right before it hits. Recovery. The power comes back. Maybe the generators kick in. And too late. What that type of construction is, as you said there, what led to Oh my gosh, there's definitely some cars. Coming down. Yeah, this is a continuous truss uh, bridge. Not a whole bunch of cars, but there's cars. Uh, look at that. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the spans is, is wow. on, on the other, just for, as a balancing load. And if you take one of those over, uh, then, then the others become... Oh, uh, one week to one, like, sorry, 23 down 14, 124 West Franklin uh, Street, here. apartment 613, between Cathedral Street and Park Avenue, four list is this. There have been questions raised over this was built in the 1970s and whether there, there could have been uh, more retrograde uh, improvements to the structure. Thomas, it looks like this news conference is about to get underway in Baltimore, so uh, let's listen in. Everybody good? Everybody ready? Okay, good morning. My name is Chief James Wallace. I'm the Chief of the Baltimore City Fire Department. I'm joined this morning by our Mayor Brandon Scott, Council President Mosby, Councilwoman Porter, County Executive Johnny Oshevsky, and Baltimore County Fire Chief Joanne Run. Um, our brief this morning will be an update on the search and rescue operation that's ongoing at this point. So at approximately 0140 hours this morning, our 911 center dispatched a call to the Baltimore City Fire Department for a report of a water rescue. Um, in the Patapsco River 
in the area of the Key Bridge. As units were responding, they began to receive numerous calls indicating multiple people in the water. At some point during that, that chain of events of calls, uh, we began to receive indications that a, uh, a ship may have struck the Key Bridge. We got further information through multiple calls that the Key Bridge, um, portions of the Key Bridge had actually collapsed. At about 0150 hours, our first unit arrived on scene and reported um, a complete collapse of the Key Bridge. Um, we were also given information at that time that there were likely multiple people on the bridge at the time of the collapse and that as a result, multiple people were in the water. We were able to remove uh, two people from the water. Uh -huh. One individual refused service and refused transport. Really? Essentially, that person was not injured. However, there was another individual that's been transported to a local trauma center that is in very serious condition. At this time, we have multiple air assets from the Maryland State Police, as well as the Baltimore Police Department, as well as multiple Marine assets from around the region, including Baltimore City, Anne Arundel County, Baltimore County, as well as multiple local and state police uh, agencies, uh, National Resources Police, um, BPD Special Ops Unit is in here, Maryland State Police is here. We have multiple resources. We are still very much in an active search and rescue. This includes on the surface of the water, subsurface, as well as on the deck of the ship itself. I believe at this point we may be looking for we may be looking for upwards of seven individuals. That's the latest information we have. Seven. However, what I will say is, is the information that I'm giving you right now is as of right now. It's what we know right now. Um, this is a very large incident. It involves a very large footprint. Multiple agencies are operating, therefore, information is subject to change as we get more wow. intel um, and as our crews work through the board. Um, over the next 8 to 12 hours, you can expect to continue to see um, our air and maritime assets functioning um, out on the water and in the air above. Um, we need to do damage assessment of, of the ship itself before we can board that ship. Um, we need to continue subsurface search, which is including uh, different types of sonar. We have side scan sonar, we have other sonar capabilities here. We have underwater uh, UAVs that we're working with. And throughout the night, we've also been working with uh, infrared technology, both from the air and on the water surface. So um, I'm going to wrap up here with just saying this continues to be a search and rescue operation. It continues to be a very dynamic operation with multiple local, state, and federal resources involved. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to our Mayor, Mayor Brandon Scott. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Everyone, this is a unthinkable tragedy. Perhaps first and foremost, pray for all of those who are impacted by this family. Pray for our first responders and thank them, uh, all of them working together city, state, local, to make sure that we are working through this uh, tragedy. Uh, this is an ongoing ACTIC uh, research uh, that we're having right now. We're going to continue, as you heard from Chief Wallace, to throughout as long as we have to be doing that, we will do it. Uh, but we have to be thinking about the families and people impacted. Uh, folks, we have to try to find and save. This is what our focus should be on right now. We're going to continue to work in partnership with every part of government to do everything that we can uh, to get us through the other side of this tragedy. And with that, I'll turn it over to County Executive Olszewski. Thank you, Mayor Scott. Um, I think we all awoke this morning to an unspeakable tragedy. Uh, as the mayor indicated, we know that there will be families and individuals impacted by this, regardless of what happens the rest of the way out. Uh, so I would just echo the mayor in lifting up prayers for those who are impacted, but also ask that our residents pay, pray for our first responders. Um, you know, they have been on scene since very early in the morning. 
um, not only conducting initial search and rescue operations, but planning for uh, additional ones as the sun comes up. And, um, you know, the work that they do cannot be understated. And we just, I want to just thank them for all that they are doing and, and will do in the hours and days ahead. Uh, we know that we have a long road ahead, not just in the search and rescue, but in the fallout following this. Uh, I think we appropriately have our attention on the search and rescue efforts currently. Uh, and just here alongside uh, our partners in the city to say that they have our full support, just as we want to thank um, our state partners for the resources they've offered up, uh, as well as uh, the federal partners who have already reached out. Uh, the mayor and I have talked to the governor. We've, we've heard from the secretary of transportation. Uh, so collectively, we thank on the search and rescue for, efforts, uh, their thoughts, their well wishes. Uh, but again, this is a very active situation, and we want to just thank uh, the chief and our teams for all the great work they're doing. And with that, I'll turn things back over to the chief. Thank you, County Executive Olszewski. Uh, we do some Q&A right now. Now we're just going to go around and have everyone uh, present some questions. For this. Uh, chief, can you tell us where the crew of the ship is? Um, you also mentioned, too, that uh, two people were rescued. Who made the first 911 call? And there were reports that it was a crew on the deck of the ship working at that point. Can you confirm any of that? The latest information we have on the sh on the crew of the ship is that they are still on board the ship. Um, there's been comms between the ship crew and the Coast Guard. So as, po as part of the uh, overall operation, we communicate through the Coast Guard with the ship. And, and I'm sorry, your other questions? So as, po as part of the uh, overall operation, we communicate through the Coast Guard with the ship. And, and I'm sorry, your other questions? There were two people taken. Who made the first 911 call? I don't know who's who made that call yet. Okay, and there were, were there other workers on the, the deck of the ship, at this, or the deck of the bridge at this point? We had heard that information. Can you confirm that? We were being told there were workers on the bridge. We have yet to confirm that. Um, we'll work with MDTA to, to you know, obviously to get that information. About how many cars were on that ship, last question, uh, on the uh, on the deck of the bridge at the time it collapsed? You know Don't I mean? have a number. I can tell you our sonar has detected the presence of vehicles submerged in the water. I don't have a count of that yet. Thank you. Uh, Chief, you, you mentioned upwards of seven individuals that you're looking for. We've heard reports of as many as 20 individuals. Can you just paint a more clear picture of about how many people actually fell into the water, how many people you might be uh, looking to rescue, and also if you can give an idea of how many vehicles, although you might not have the answer, but really just the search and rescue. Yeah, I'll start with the last one. So I don't know how many vehicles yet. I know that we have detected the presence of vehicles. As far as the number between the seven and 20, that's been a dynamic count. Um, throughout the morning, just given the fact that we haven't yet nailed that number down. We do believe that at least seven are involved in that, at least seven at this point. That fell into the water. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and I know you said the crew was accounted for according to the Coast Guard on deck. Do we know if any of the crew members were part of these at least seven people that may have been in the water? We do not. Can I just ask, um, survivability in waters around these temperatures is, is not very long. At what point do you shift focus to become uh, more of a, a, a salvage operation? So we'll be guided by, by our dive teams. We will determine what the temperature of the water is. The other issue that we have out there is this water is, is, is current uh, influenced. Mm -hmm. So right now we think the tide is coming back in. That adds a bit of a challenge to us also. We can certainly dive in these conditions, but we have to take a lot of factors into play, right? The fact that there may be trauma involved, they have been in, in the water an extended period of time. Um, but also remember, we're battling darkness. So, you know, it's, it's quite possible that we may have somebody there that we've not seen yet. Um, and as they work closer to the debris field, um, you know, they'll, they'll obviously make those determinations. But we're going to rely on the experts, which are our, our, our dive masters that are here, our dive team, to tell us when they believe we've reached that 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 non-survivability point. Thank you. Yes, sir. Jimmy. Chief Wallace, was there any indication that there was a problem on the ship? Was it led in by tugboats at any point during the main day? Like anything that could uh, so far early on point you to something went wrong? We, we do not have that information with regard to the investigation. I would refer that to, to law enforcement. My, my focus since 1.40 this morning has been 
that rescue operation. So, so far there's been no indication that any kind of like an emergency dispatch came from that ship beforehand? I have no information about that, ma'am. Have you, have you been able to talk to the pilot, the American pilot on, on that bridge? The, the, the pilot on the vessel? Yeah. We have not talked to the pilot on the vessel. The rescue personnel, the rescue operation, oh, we have not right. interacted. So Chief, back over you, here. What can you tell us about the victims that were pulled from the water? Uh, man, woman. I don't have well, agents. Update on condition, sorry, again. I'm sorry. Update on the condition as well. You? Yeah, I don't, I don't have age and gender on either. One patient refused service, right? It really, they weren't injured. The second patient, however, was seriously injured and is at an area trauma center. Are you including them in the seven, at least seven people? We don't know yet if they're part of that seven. Okay. The, 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 the patient is injured severely enough that we've not been able to debrief that patient. That seven number, did that come from people witnessing cars going down? Like, where did that number come from? Or is that just from the sonar hits that you got? No, that was the initial information that we got as we were arriving on the scene, the number. And that number, again, as I said earlier, has fluctuated, right? <coughs> that, that seven has been a consistent number. How many agencies are here assisting right now with this recovery? Oh, wow. Recovery? Dozens. Um, yeah, dozens. I mean, locally, you know, fire department-wise, Baltimore County's here, Howard County's here, Harford uh, was here, PG was here, um, Anne Arundel, um, of course, Baltimore City. And a lot of those agencies are here by virtue of the fact that they may have specialized equipment that we need during an incident like this. So... Um, we're, we're bringing in the equipment Ooh. specific to the operation right now. And then even even law enforcement agencies have a lot of the same marine ops equipment as we do. So given the incident is so big, we try to force multiply and just bring as many resources in as we can so that we can really blanket a large area for a search. What about the fuel spill? What kind of resources are you bringing in to mitigate that? We don't, we've not been able to confirm that we actually have an active fuel spill from the vessel. Um, we've had odors of diesel fuel. The Maryland Department of the Environment is here, um, as well as the Coast Guard. So they would take leads on that as well. We hope as the sun comes up a little bit with the air assets that are up to get a much better picture. If we do have a fuel spill, what the impact has been so far. Yeah, Maryland State Police has been here. Um, Foxtrot is also working this. There, there are two air resources right now. Um, I don't know that we won't bring any more in, but right now they're the two primary. Um, you know, air reconnaissance on something on the open water is just, it's an invaluable resource. And we've been very fortunate to have it because as we put people out in the dark on the water to conduct searches, they have that degree of overwatch from those assets. So it's it's been an invaluable resource for us. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mr. Executive, uh, we're talking about search and rescue. I know that, and that's where the focus is right now. Uh, I was awakened with this news. We're all awakened with this news. I've seen the video. What, what, what do you make of the totality of this incident? What, what are you thinking about what you've seen and what this community's experienced now? Well, this is a, a tragedy that you can never imagine, right? And uh, I was awake when Chief Wallace called me, but never would you think that you would see, physically see, the key bridge tumble down like that. It looked like something out of an action movie. And you just think about, most importantly, which is what we all should be thinking about right now, nothing but those families and people that are impacted and those people who are risking their lives right now from not just Baltimore City and Baltimore County, but all over the state to try to save lives. That should be our focus, the preservation of life, because no one wants to see that happen, let alone someone in their family, someone that they know uh, uh, be injured in an incident like this. We'll take two more questions. Your, your, your thoughts no, about yeah. what, you've, what this community has experienced this morning. Uh, look, I, I think that folks are stunned. I think folks are reeling. Uh, and I think that's particularly true for people who are worried about their loved ones right now. Uh, I think there'll be plenty of time to talk about what this bridge means to the community, what it means for commerce. But at the end of the day, 
right now this is about the humanity of people who are impacted and the men and women who are out there trying to save lives and, and recover folks off the bridge. So uh, I think there'll be plenty, plenty of opportunity to talk about that. But really, uh, right now and for the foreseeable hours ahead, this is really about focusing on the search and rescue. The community, just again, thank the chief for his leadership and, and for all of the affiliated partners that we have working on this. Chief, Chief well, I know there's like the fact that this could have been intentional, that this could be some kind of act of, of terrorism or intentionally hitting the bridge. That's that's not my focus here, ma'am. That's part of the law enforcement investigation. So I would I would defer to to the proper authorities for that. And actually, can I ask? We saw something similar to this happen in Philly when 95 came. A portion of that came down. I know you said that you guys have spoken to Secretary of Transportation. I'm assuming you judge. Has he made any comment about? No, th no, thank you. I, I spoke with Secretary Bougez directly. Uh, he and his team said that they're going to obviously work with us throughout this incident and work with not just uh, the city and county, but really the state of Maryland uh, to make sure uh, that we have every resource that, that he and the federal government can provide. How long is it going to take to rebuild this, Mayor? I think right now, sir, uh, listen, we shouldn't even be having that discussion right now. The discussion right now should be about the people, the souls, the lives that we're trying to save. Uh, there will be a time to discuss about a bridge and how we get a bridge back up. But right now, there are people in the water that we have to get out. And that's the only thing we should be talking about. Well, thank you. To go back to the question about the, the terrorism, there is absolutely no indication that there's any terrorism, that, that this was done on purpose. Our criminal intel is working with the FBI and other federal and state agencies to get all the intel that we have, but there's absolutely no indication that it was intentional. Thank you, everybody. Okay, I want to thank Morning, you all. Guys. Um, I will be advising you, updating you on the next briefing. Okay. Will that be here, Kevin? Okay. Well, let's leave that news conference as it's just come to a, a bit of a conclusion. Uh, the person doing most of the talking and with the most to say was the chief of Baltimore City Fire Department, James Wallace. Uh, and uh, the words he used were they're on active search and rescue posture. In terms of details, two people have been rescued so far, one in a serious condition, one seemingly unhurt who didn't want uh, treatment. And they're looking now for upwards, his words, of seven people in the water. They are searching the surface underwater, as well as the deck of the ship. The crew of the ship, uh, the Dali, remain on board. Others, Reuters in particular, reporting that uh, officials have an active fuel spill from the vessel. We'll discuss that shortly. Uh, and uh, they are searching a very large footprint as well. The White House has since issued a statement too, saying it is closely monitoring the collision of a shipping vessel with the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. The result. All right, for the new people that have joined, let me show you this. Uh... Oh, it's not that one. Uh... I had the tweet. It was a really good tweet about how the breakdown of the bridge, what happened. Uh, let me just type it in here. Uh, but, 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 that was a really good one. Oh, man. Mm. Right, I'm going to have to find that one. There was a really, really good one. Oh, here it is. I think this is it. Yeah. It was an even better one, but I'll show you this one. There was one that was a little bit better than this one, but you get to see that the, the power was out at this point. The power had got on and turned off, I think, twice. And so at this point, the power's out. And right before it hits, the power comes back on. And I mean, you can see cars going on top. This person just made it off. It looks like anyway. You can see from the right top here. Wow, that person might have made it past too, I think. Let's see. Oh, this shows it. The part. Let's see. 
off on right before hitting it goes off okay it come back on i think car go on top Yeah, it's right there. Oh my gosh, dude. That is insane to see that. Imagine had had this happen like later in the day too. Like nothing. That's more daylight, you can see a better shot. We uh put on some. I'm car accident injury attorney. Were you sleeping? Were, were, did it wake you up? I was sleeping, and then it like it kind of sounded like uh, we have a lot of airplanes that go across, mm -hmm. so it sounded like that at first, and then we felt the vibration, and then it was just like a really like vigorous like vibration. Are you connected? Yes. Now, I mean, you could tell the bridge was gone this morning, but now it's just, it's like, a, it's tragic, man. Yeah. How many times would you say you've crossed the key bridge in your life? I mean, I just crossed it yesterday twice for work. It makes you think a lot, right? I mean, you never know what could happen. I mean, yeah, but you know, uh, life goes on, but I, I just pray for the people that are involved, you know? Yeah. yeah and and just describe, you know, the, given the conditions, it's, it's cold wow. out here. I mean, can you even imagine? Imagine what, what they're having to go through. And, and they said they're going to keep, you know, searching. They're going to stay on this until they have gotten everyone out that they can. But it's got to be extraordinarily difficult. I can't imagine what, what they go through. I mean, I have first responders in my family. But uh, I tell you what, they'll get the job done. That's all I know. And, and, and tell me, when you were, like, jolted, what did you think it was? Did you, did you look at your phone right away? I mean, how long did it take oh, you to realize? Yeah, I didn't look at my phone. But I did run outside because I thought like a plane crashed. Sounded that it was that it was harsh. That loud, yeah. So I was like, man, that's close. So I went and looked around, didn't see anything, and then went back inside. And my uncle actually called me and said the key bridge collapsed. So uh, I mean, it's such a t talk to me about the importance of that, you know, bridge too. I mean, it's I, I think I, I read a statistic roughly thirty thousand cars a day. It's also where a lot of the uh, hazardous chemicals go through because they can't go through. The Tunnel. Yeah, the tunnel. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the main right even there. even with uh, like plumbing, I'm in plumbing and HVAC mm -hmm. right now. So even with plumbing, you can't take acetylene tanks through the tunnel. So it's going to be a big strain on not only just day to day, but tradesmen's lives as well. You know. Uh, I, I heard you say you used to fish under there. I mean, just to think of that massive steel structure, how big it is, and, and something that could cause it to collapse. I mean, it's baffling. I mean, I I'm, I can't fish under there no more, but. Uh, Man, it's I don't know the force the it, the force that it took to do that. It doesn't look like the the ship's damaged at all. So Massive I, ship, yeah. It, it's, it's just it's, it's hard to even describe because I know people are seeing aerial views and and different angles of this, but just from right here where we are on the edge of the water, and we're we're a little bit far away, but it's just it's just incredible. It it is incredible. It's devastating to look at to think something has been there since 1977. Actually. The anniversary just passed yeah, on the 24th. Yeah, a few, few days ago. So, you know, to think something's been there 40 plus years or whatever. I'm not good at math, so don't no, me 47 that years. Yeah, it's, um, it's just it's hard to fathom, right? I mean, people are saying, yeah. even I think I heard the mayor say it's like something out of a movie. Yeah, I mean, it, it's exactly what it's like. Uh, one of my neighbors came up and they said it was like an action movie. You know, it's something you feel like you're in a in Hollywood. You know, you're not. It's not real. It's a dream. So. And sadly, it's real. And they're you know right now they're trying to save these people. Yeah, I mean, I hope I hope every single one of them's okay. I prayed for them. I'll continue to pray until they're found or okay. So that's all we can do. Thank you very much, Jeremy. And uh, again, we we know.
All right, uh, Tickle Tits McGee, thank you so much for the super chat and 25 memberships, man. Appreciate that. Early morning, I'm sure people are probably still sleeping. We've got a lot of West Coast people, too, and the central time. Um, Tickle Tits, thanks for the five, says, I got vessel charts and chopper plots, if you want, Mel. Yeah, if you can send it, send it. I'll take a look at it. Um, Devil Dice tagged me on Twitter and sent me this post. This person, Joe, says a ship's entire crew is on watch while transitioning a traffic separation scheme. The pilot just disembarked a few minutes prior. That's when the vessel accelerated, according to GIS, and made a starboard turn at the last second right into the bridge embankment. It shows a, it's called the Dolly. Other, another thing, there was this post. It says here... Um, History repeats itself. During World War II, a tanker accidentally rammed into the, I don't even know how to say that, Chesapeake <laughs> City drawbridge that carried Maryland Route 213. Sure enough, there was a bridge sitting on top of the tanker, struck a bridge, or struck the bridge, and down it came. The Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed today after a container ship accidentally struck the bridge. On top of a tanker. During the war, a tanker, the Franz Claussen, accidentally rammed the Chesapeake City drawbridge that carried Maryland Route 230. One of the challenges, but uh, as you heard the fire chief say, they're dealing with the tide. Uh, there's low visibility in the water, but they're using a lot of technology, the infrared, the sonar. They have multiple crews there. They're all coordinating with each other. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's just... It, a, a, a huge, it's a huge search and rescue effort, probably one of the largest that we've ever seen in Baltimore. And then you've also got that massive ship and you've got the big chunks of the bridge that are in the Patapsco that they've got to go around and, and, and uh, trying to pinpoint, you know, where where those vehicles may be. And uh, and also, you know, uh, the bridge is so high, 180 feet, and that's an incredible height to, to think that you know, hopefully someone could survive a fall like that, but uh, it, it's just incredible to think about. And there's, so there's a lot of challenges ahead. The search and rescue is the number one. I'm sure this will also probably create a national conversation about infrastructure, and it's going to have a big impact on getting uh, goods around the East Coast and in and through Baltimore uh, for many, many, many months to come, Vic. It's definitely and of course, one of the beautiful, beautiful things about living in an area like this where we have a lot of water uh, is the bridges are one of the things that add to the beauty, uh, but it also creates a problem when something happens on one it of those does. bridges. It, uh, it cuts off people in terms of transportation and being able to move about. And now we want to check in with Angela Foster, who's helping people, helping us navigate uh, this closure this morning. Uh, Angela, what's the latest? Well, Sina, we do know that uh, MDTA authorities quickly put detours in place for folks traveling through Dundalk or through the Curtis Bay Hawkins point side of the bridge due to the bridge collapse. So 695, you'll have posted detours. So we have been suggesting the tunnels. Now, there'll be a lot of tractor trailers, unfortunately, will be prohibited from entering the harbor tunnel just because the height is just over 13 feet and only eight feet wide. Now, the Fort McHenry tunnel is a bit wider and a bit taller, but we'll have officials at all of these locations. This is the impact we're starting to see now. 95 southbound trying to get to the Fort McHenry tunnel with a lot of of the bailout traffic. Now, for folks who live in those neighborhoods, if you are on the Hawkins Point side or Curtis Bay side, we're being told that there's a pretty serious accident, unfortunately, Route 2 at 695, in addition to the fact that Run Arundel Expressway, Maryland 10, that's going to be the point where you are detoured off on the outer loop of I-695. We're expecting a lot of bailout traffic on Pennington Avenue. If you're joining us right now, you've been watching CBS News Baltimore. We are tracking developing news from Baltimore right now, where overnight a cargo ship we know crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge, causing that bridge to collapse. You're looking at live images of the scene right now. More on this story coming up. Uh. Mr. President, there's a lot.
over the bridge. Let me get this back on here. Insane to see, man. I used to have, uh, when I was a kid, used to always be afraid about when we would drive over the bridge in New York. I used to even have nightmares sometimes about the bridge coming down or whatever. Uh, crazy to see, man. Maddie, thank you for the membership. Operations, the FM1, are you still on the scene? Damn. Really? Tinkle Tits McGee, thank you for the 20, man. Says there was advanced Engine warning. Engine 33, medic 20, respond, medic alarm 33-31. 2745 Burrell Avenue between North Lakewood Avenue and North Kenwood Avenue. 50 year old male overdose unconscious. Engine 33, medic 20, respond, medic alarm 33-31. All right. So Tickle Tit says, there was advanced warning. I saw the longer versions, and there were emergency vehicles arriving at least three minutes in advance. And also, the bridge's LEDs changed to red prior to impact to show distress. Oh. oh man, it's probably going to be like a big investigation, or there needs to be a big investigation into the whole thing. Oh, my God. I mean... They kept putting out the number seven, seven people missing, I guess, but I don't know if that includes or doesn't include the two people in the hospital. Well, one, it refused hospital care. And uh, the other one's in critical condition. This guy hasn't slept. Wow. I've been going for three hours. Woo! That agenda guy goes hard. <laughs> I'm already tired. I'm ready to call it. I mean, we had a really busy day yesterday. Let me see what else we got. Live feed. Where's the radio? There's Fox. Now, do you want to take you to another live view that we do have? Again, just another angle that is showing. Uh, the scene that we are watching at this hour. Two people pulled from the waters, one of them in serious condition. That is according to Baltimore yeah, Fire Chief James here, Wallace. He said authorities, quote, may be looking for upwards of seven people, but said, as I mentioned, the number could change, and it was not clear if the two rescued were included in the seven. The vessel appears to have crashed into one of the supports at the Francis Scott Key Bridge. That's according to video that's been circulating all over social media over the last several hours. Kevin Cartwright, the director of communications for the Baltimore Fire Department, calling this, quote, a developing mass casualty event. Now, the temperature in the river at the time was about 47 degrees in the early hours of Tuesday. That is according to a buoy that collects data for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Some of the cargo actually did appear to be dangling from the bridge, which does span the river to the entrance there to a busy harbor. The river leads to the port of Baltimore. That is, of course, a major hub for shipping on the East Coast. It opened back in 1977 and is named for the writer of the Star Spangled Banner. Maryland Governor Wes Moore declaring a state of emergency and said he was working to get federal resources deployed. The FBI also on scene. I do want to check in right now with our Fox DC team as they are out there. You couldn't see. And now uh, what you see behind me, those colorful boxes, those are the cargo containers that are on the cargo ship itself. And as you cross over the bridge there, you can see the part of it colliding and, and just resting up against what is left of those truss, those steel truss spans on the key bridge. So pretty incredible images here. Uh, what we know, this is still an active search and rescue operation. Two people were rescued. One refused treatment. The other said to be in pretty serious condition, so much so that uh, we were told that they were not able to speak with that person about exactly what happened. We know that they have been bringing in all kinds of assets from federal agencies. They are using uh, spotlights and sonar. They have detected some vehicles or what would appear to be the signature of vehicles underwater. And here's what Fire Chief James Wallace said about potential other victims. 
maybe looking for upwards of seven individuals. This is a very large incident. It involves a very large footprint. Multiple agencies are operating. Therefore, information is subject to change as we get more intel um, and as our crews work through the morning. We need to do damage assessment of, of the ship itself before we can board that ship. Um, and we need to continue our subsurface search, which is including um, different types of sonar. We have side scan sonar. We have other sonar capabilities here. We have underwater um, UAVs that we're working with. And throughout the night, we've also been working with uh, infrared technology, both from the air and on the water surface. So um, I'm going to wrap up here with just saying this continues to be a search and rescue operation. And, and Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott, they're also saying and what we've all been thinking, looking at that video, that it looks like something out of a disaster movie. In fact, I didn't believe it at first when I saw it. And uh, even speaking with Maryland Transportation Authority folks, they said the same thing. They had to wait and just pause a second or two to try to confirm that it was indeed real. And when they did, just that shocking and sobering realization of what actually happened here. There will be a lot of questions as to how this could happen. This cargo ship, the Dolly, had just left Dundalk about 1.30 in the morning. It's headed toward uh, Colombo, Sri Lanka. You would think it would be familiar with this strike, one of those pillars, which is very well lit. So those are going to be more of the questions to come afterward. But right now, all thoughts are focused on the rescue efforts for the survivors. We'll send it back to you. All right, Mel, thanks very much. Mel's going to keep us posted on everything. But, just, I mean, stunning images behind Mel where you see you follow the road to where the bridge should be. And instead, all you see are those cargo containers that are still on that container ship that struck the bridge support earlier this morning. Yes. A crumbled mess that authorities are going to have to continue to search through and sift through throughout the course of the morning. Thanks so much, Melanie. We'll check back in as soon as you learn more. Annie May. Yeah, thanks, Marissa. We are taking a look at Sky. A big thank you to our Fox 5 DC team as they have been covering this around the clock. I mean, look at this boat. Wow. Huge. Also has Greg Payne out there, so we're going to check in for his live report coming up in a matter of minutes. As you can see to the right side of your screen, that is just one aerial image that does show the bridge collapsed, and that is the vessel that struck it right there on your screen. Want to pop it up just a little bit bigger so you can get a better view of the situation. We've been showing you the different shots that we have coming in from our different affiliates that are out there. That is a live look wow. at three different shots on your screen there. And you can see to the one uh, that is over there on the left, it's an aerial image that really shows how large that ship is that did strike the bridge. Off to the top right hand side, a different view showing the bridge collapsed there with uh, essentially that cargo ship from the other side. And then you do have a view on the bottom right hand side of your screen that also shows essentially the area of the bridge where it is shut down. That shot on your screen is coming in from Fox News. The time now is 704 on the East Coast and 404 on the West Coast. We do continue to cover the latest here on this bridge collapse. Secretary Pete Buttigieg of Transportation saying that he's spoken with Governor Moore and Mayor Scott to offer the U.S. Department of Transportation support after that vessel strike and collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Rescue efforts do remain underway, and drivers in the Baltimore area should follow local responder guidance on any detours. Again, a lot of the information that we do have has been coming in from these. Uh, I wonder if there's any cars that, like, or right at the part that didn't collapse. Oops. Like uh, somewhere along this part of the bridge that, that remained intact. I wonder if there were any cars along there that just had not made it there. Wild. L.I. crammed with co containers, slammed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge in the Baltimore air, uh, area, Baltimore, Maryland, of course. Uh, the ship, the, uh, or the bridge, was built in 19, I think they finished it up in 1977. And now it has hit one of the abutments and the whole darn bridge fell into the water. So there's another look of what it looked like uh, beforehand. And this bridge was built back, uh, it opened in 1977. 
And so now this is what it looked like at 1.30 this morning when that vessel hit that bridge and then it collapsed. You can see quite a few vehicles crossing it as the bridge comes down. Looks like some construction workers may have been on there, which is typical, you know, work in the middle of the night. So, so this is what it looked like in the middle of the night, but as we get to Greg, now that the sun is up, we're getting more visuals of what it looks like now and the extent of the damage and the extent of the rescue missions that are underway. Yeah, well, Mike and Alex, I mean, at this point in time, you are seeing that vantage point. You are seeing the cargo ship right there, and you are seeing the extent of the damage that is the key bridge. And, I mean, right now we are waiting to hear from officials. They're going to be holding another press conference. They had one earlier. They're going to be holding another press conference in the next, you know, 10, 15 minutes here. But from the earlier press conference, we got pretty good information in regards to some situations. I know from the very start we were just hoping that there would be some type of rescues that would occur in this situation. I know it's not an ideal situation, but they did say that there were two people that were rescued. Um, not sure if that is a part of that initial seven that we were talking about that they were uh, doing the search and rescues for. Now, one of those patients was actually not injured and denied any type of help from, from medical crews. The other one is dealing with some serious critical injuries and is in a trauma center right now, a local trauma center. Now, officials had mentioned that they are waiting for the dive team to determine whether once the situation becomes non-survivable and so at this point in time they're going to continue doing their search and rescue until they determine that you know it's a situation where the, it, it's not it's not worth at a point to be able to try to do a search and re rescue and it would then ultimately turn into a recovery um, and hearing from the officials you can just hear it from from the sound of their voice they understand the impact that this is going to have on many families now one of the things that they had mentioned was in regards to that cruise ship that I don't know if you're looking at it right now from our, our, our live shot but they were mentioning that there were still crews that were on board there and they were saying that there's been constant communication between the ship and the Coast Guard um, talking to you know the Coast Guard in regards to the situation that has occurred now we were talking a little bit about the fact that you know the temperatures I mean it's 36 degrees here now the water it's in and around 45 degrees but you know those type of conditions aren't necessarily the most ideal but they were mentioning one of the one of the tougher things things that's probably going to make things pretty tough is the fact that it is very current um, current dependent this 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 area this body of water and so with the tide coming on in there is some concern that that might make their job a whole lot tougher and so they also mentioned that they have smelled odor of, 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 of diesel fuel they're still looking into that situation now if we can go back to that that video that we've been showing pretty much all morning i mean you can just see that is the moment that the cargo ship hit the bridge causing the collapse now we were told uh, based on the associated press reporting it happened in around 1 30 in the morning leading to multiple vehicles falling into the water and authorities as i mentioned before trying to rescue at least seven people um reports initially were the fact that there were uh, several vehicles that were on that bridge and during that press conference we did also hear the fact that they have brought out sonar and they have seen multiple vehicles that are being detected on sonar they can't tell us an exact amount but they have seen vehicles uh detected on their sonar so you know earlier on emergency officials were mentioning that you know this this appears as though this is a developing mass event um and we know that crews are going to be working they mentioned that they're going to continue trying to search and rescue until it is determined that, you know, it turns into a situation where they're just going to have to be doing recovery. So they are going to be out and about working quite a bit. Um, and I, I guess this thing didn't take the, the boat. Didn't take significant structural damage, I guess, unless it has a small leak. I was thinking, imagine that thing starts to go down, but it, it seems to be intact. Hitting that bridge. Also, the uh, governor will be there, and we will be there, too, when that happens, probably in the next 10, 15 minutes. So, Boy, nothing left of that bridge. No. And you just have to think. I mean, at this point, as they mentioned in the, the earlier press conference we saw, all they have are the sonar images to know that there are still vehicles submerged, oh. but they still don't know exactly how many people need mm -hmm. to be rescued because there was also construction work happening on the bridge as yeah. well. Yeah. All right, we'll say on that. We had our issues last night here in the Philadelphia area with...
All right. So again, we are checking in with our different affiliates that are on the scene of this bridge collapse over in Baltimore. A major situation, uh, of course, an emergency, a state of emergency declared there by the governor in Maryland. We did have a news conference a bit earlier on today. That was uh, with some of the officials. It took place about 30 minutes ago. However, we do expect another news conference to get underway in five, 10 minutes. We'll make sure to bring that to you right here on Live Now from Fox. I want to take you out to more of these live images that we do have. So I'll probably stay tuned until the next press conference, and then I'm probably gonna go back and take a nap after because I, I got another thing later today scheduled for a live. And uh, I don't know who, who knows what else is gonna come. A lot of crazy stuff in the last couple of days happening, been kind of nonstop say that two people were pulled from the waters under the Francis Scott Key Bridge, one of them in serious condition, according to Baltimore Fire Chief James Wallace. Again, we do expect to get some more details here any moment now. It does look like we actually have a podium shot that has been set up. You can see uh, all of the microphones underway as a news conference should begin in five to ten minutes. I do want to head to our first two-minute commercial break of the hour here at 712 on the East Coast. Okay. Little commercial break, man. Good morning. How are you guys doing? This this happened super like I don't know. This was like at one something in the morning. So this this situation is already. I mean, at one point I had woken up in the middle of the night and I saw I was tagged on Twitter. I think I retweeted it and then I went back to sleep. Um, and I woke up and I seen that the situation is still going on. And I wonder what the plan is for the cargo ship. Are they going to evacuate the people there? Can that ship keep moving? Are they going to have to take off the... I mean, how did they get the ship out of that? Let me see what, what y'all saying in the chat. <laughs> Erica said, y'all team order is going to be delayed. <laughs> Captain with a hangover. FYI, your headrest is a window breaker. Oh yeah. I don't know if you're if you're in that situation. I don't. I mean, falling from that height with all that debris for inside a vehicle and a bridge comes down. How do you even come out of that? How do you survive? And how deep is that water? And I wonder, do those vehicles just drop straight down, or do they actually float for a few seconds and then go down? Hey, Paul, good morning. Yeah, no, I don't think there's any conspiracy or any kind of malicious, intentional type of thing. I mean... Uh, unless somebody purposely wanted to hit that shit, unless, you know, unless somebody in the boat was on a mission. Ready, out. Again, you can see the microphones and podium set up. But let me pop up this other shot right here that does show the aftermath. It's very close up. As you can see, the bridge collapsed and uh, most of it in the water right there. But also that is the ship that did strike the bridge there. Now, that container ship ramming into the major bridge in Baltimore early this morning, causing it, as you can see, to snap in many places and then plunge into the water below it. Several vehicles falling into the water, the temperature of which was about 47 degrees at the time. Rescuers said they were initially searching for seven people. Two people, though, pulled from the water under the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. One of them listed 
in serious condition. The cargo ship does appear to have crashed into one of the bridge's supports during the middle of the night when traffic would be expected to be lighter. The vessel we know caught fire and thick black smoke was billowing out of it. Now, the fire chief said authorities, quote, may be looking for upwards of seven people, but said that number could change. It was not clear if the two rescued were included in that seven. We know that sonar has indicated that there are vehicles in the water where, again, the temperature was about 47 degrees in the early hours. That is according to a buoy that collects data for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Earlier, Kevin Cartwright, the director of communications for the Baltimore Fire Department, said that several vehicles were on the bridge at the time, including one that was the size of a tractor trailer truck. He called the collapse a, quote, developing mass casualty event, though he didn't know at the time how many people specifically were impacted. Again, I do want to pop up this shot right here. We do have several different angles that show where that news conference will be getting underway. It's expected to take place any moment now. Let's see if we can pop up some of the other shots as well. They're all basically around the same location here, and they will all be getting that same news conference, which we will bring to you live, raw, and unfiltered as it does get underway. Do want to take you out to just some of the different posts that we have coming in from officials over there in Maryland. We know that the Maryland governor has declared a state of emergency. Take a look right here. Governor Westmore did tweet out, my office is in close communication with U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, Baltimore Mayor Buttigieg. Brandon Scott, Baltimore County Executive and Baltimore Fire as emergency personnel are on the scene following the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Not clear if the governor will be speaking at any of these news conferences that are expected to take place. Again, we heard from local officials maybe about 30 minutes ago, 40 minutes ago at this point. They did say that they would hold another news conference in just about uh, two hours. So in about an hour and a half, we expect to hear from them again. We will uh, kind of update you once we do get a specific time oh, on that. But as of right now, it is not clear. However, we do know transportation officials are expected to speak momentarily. Let me pop that shot up for you just one more time here. All right, we also know that some of that cargo appeared to be dangling from the bridge, which does span the river at the entrance to that busy harbor, the river leading to the port of Baltimore. That's a major hub for shipping on the East Coast. It opened, by the way, back in 1977, and the bridge is, no question, named for the writer of the Star Spangled Banner. As I mentioned, Maryland Governor Wes Moore declaring a state of emergency and saying that he was working to get federal resources deployed the FBI also on the scene. Synergy Marine Group, which owns and does manage the ship known as Dolly, confirmed the vessel hit a pillar of the bridge around 1.30 a.m. local time while two pilots were in control. It said all crew members, including the pilots, were accounted for and there were no reports of any injuries. Looking around to see what other shots we do have that show the different angles here of the situation that we are dealing with. I'm going to pull those up for you in just a second here, as I want to also keep up the shot of that news conference as the stand is set up and ready to go. Once we see those transportation officials walk up, we will make sure to. Good morning. Good morning, man. Uh, let me see what you said here. Good morning. I enjoy watching your streams. Thank you. Appreciate the 10. Oh, man. They said I thought they said there was some construction workers, too, working. from a little bit far away but zoomed in where you can see uh, essentially all of that damage that has been done once again we do know that all of this no question is under investigation and the fbi is Thank even involved in up. that investigation actually looks like our fox 5 dc team is on this once again they do have melanie Almlick out there so let's pop up that audio only a few of these you know supports that hold up the entire bridge. So if one goes, they, they all go once the, the pieces of the bridge start to uh, start to fall. Uh, but again, I mean, just the video there in the upper left, you can just see how massive, massive this container ship is. 
All right, we want to get to Melanie Alwick now. She's been out there uh, soon after all of this happened, gathering all of the latest details. And uh, Melanie, we are awaiting an MDOT news conference to get more, but bring us up to speed on what you've since learned since we checked in. News conference. Well, we just want to let you know that the news conference is just about to begin. I'm going to step down here and we're going to hear it from uh, Maryland oh, Transportation okay. Authorities. Uh, here you can see. All right. So as you heard Melanie saying, transportation officials walking up. Let's pop up that audio. Uh, Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here today. We're about to give you an update in our first unified joint command I-695 in Baltimore, Maryland. I am going to introduce to you our Maryland Secretary of Transportation, Paul Wiedefeld. It's spelled P-A-U-L, Wiedefeld, W-I-E-D-E-F-E-L-D. -E -E Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, at approximately 1.30 a.m., a cargo ship leaving the Port of Baltimore struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge. This caused the catastrophic collapse of the bridge. First responders from the Maryland Transportation Authority, the Toll Authority, and our federal, state, local partners immediately responded to the scene. At this time, this is an active search and rescue mission. We know there were, we know there were individuals on the bridge at the time of the collapse working on the bridge, contractors for us. Our partners from the U.S. Coast Guard will provide some more information momentarily. In terms of traffic, drivers should avoid I-695 Southeast Corridor and use I-95 I and I-895 as alternatives. I-695 is being detoured southbound at exit 43, the Peninsula Expressway, and northbound at exit 2, Route 10. Vessel traffic into and out of the port of Baltimore suspended until further notice but the port is still open for truck trans, trans, transactions. Obviously, we're very thankful for the first responders who are carrying out their efforts in these rescues and that, that, they're, that they're doing this all through the night and today. And we're praying, obviously, for everyone's safe return. We'll continue to provide updates to you, the next one being approximately 9.30. With that, with that I will turn it over to Lieutenant Colonel Palmer from the U.S. Coast Guard. Good morning. My name is Lieutenant Commander Aaron Palmer from Coast Guard Sector Maryland National Capital Region. I'm the current Acting Chief of Response for the sector. The Coast Guard's primary mission right now is search and rescue, looking for any survivors in the water. On scene, we currently have three small boats. We also have Coast Guard Cutter Mako, an 87-foot patrol boat. We have a helicopter from Air Station Atlantic City and we're working with numerous federal, state, and local partners on scene on these search and rescue efforts. Thank you. You going to take any questions you have this time? What role is the FBI playing in the investigation at this time? FBI has basically uh, to see if there's any terrorism connection, which there is not. Any, any confirmed deaths? No confirmed fatalities. Any recovered from the water alive? Um, that's still under, um, still the rescue mission is still active. Do you have any sense of what happened to the actual cargo ship? There were some reports that it suffered some major power outages just before it crashed. Uh, too early in the investigation. Was a pilot operating the ship coming in and out of the port? Was it a port's authorized pilot or was it uh, the captain of the ship? No, the pilots uh, move ships in and out of the port of Baltimore. What's happening? Pilots move. Up ships in and out of What's happening to all the other ships that are waiting the backup at this point? How are you navigating that? Basically, we're we're communicating with them. They obviously understand the situation, and we'll uh, we'll deal with the logistics of that later. Has the crew of been evacuated from the ship? And has the Coast Guard been able to make contact with the pilot on the ship? That's all being done right now. Um, I don't know the exact details of where they all are, but yes, well, obviously we're contacting them. Is this being investigated as suspicious? In any type of incident like this, the FBI would be engaged just to make sure, and that's what they did. Any idea how many vehicles are in the water? Can you, can you um, just any idea how could this happen? This bridge Too early. should not have collapsed like this. Too early investigation. Well, could you how long will the port be closed? Do we know how deep the water is there and in sort of this area where it happened, the conditions? Approximately 50 feet. Yeah, 50 feet. How many people are you looking for right now? How many people were arrested? 
I thought they'd be deeper. That's still that is what we're doing. Um, we're we're basically searching for for everyone that was potentially on the bridge. As you can imagine, it's the middle of the night. You know, you know, what type of traffic was there? Uh, how many workers were there? Workers, you know, they obviously come to a project, but other workers show up sometimes. So that's what we're investigating right now. Is this unprecedented? Is it even like this ever happened? Not in Baltimore. Sir, can you talk more about the workers on the bridge, what was going on, and how many vehicles you think might actually be in the water? They were um, they were basically doing some concrete deck repair. Uh, we don't have the number of the vehicles. Do we know who they work for? Uh, I don't have that right offhand. How long will the port be closed? Uh, uh, too, too early to determine. Are you still looking for seven people? Um, a number of people. That's that's the one number that we've had. But obviously, we're gonna we're researching to see if anyone else was on that bridge. Can you speak to some of the challenges, the freezing water, the current, the darkness this morning as you were searching for individuals? All of all of the above, to be frank. Um, it's you know a very very tough situation. Uh, one you know one a.m. in the morning. Uh, very little information at that time. You know. It, it, happen instantaneously as you've seen. Sir, it's been a number of hours at this point. What can you tell family members who might be watching about any hope that you will still recover survivors? We actually have set up a, a facility for any family members. We have um, mental health professionals there as well, so we are dealing with that. And are you ruling out any kind of intentional uh, motive? That we don't see anything that, that uh, relates to that at this time. It's an, it's an open investigation, but there's nothing that points to that in any direction. First calls after the incident come in directly from the ship. When, when the ship hit there, who, was, who were the first ones to make the 911 calls to kind of alert you? I don't know. I don't have that information. Do you have any? I don't know. I'm muted. Guess we lost audio there. Uh, we'll be back. We'll be back surely about 9:30. I'm sorry. Too early. Obviously, we reached out to a number of engineering you know, companies, and so obviously we have a, a, a long road in front of us to get to that point. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, hopefully, I mean, I don't know. It, I mean, is it the bridge or the ship? I mean, the ship screwed up, but any bridge that takes that kind of impact, I don't know if it's going to be able to withhold or withstand that kind of impact. This is the clip that I was talking about that I wanted to show you guys from the beginning, from earlier, which I retweeted it too. It's on my Twitter. This is really well done, but you can see here they lost power. So they the ship is leaving here. Okay, here we go. Starts over. So it has power. The very far left, there's power. And as it's coming, power loss number one, power goes out completely. Then it kicks back in, recovery, thick smoke coming out from the top, billowing out, power loss again. And right before it hits, it comes back on. I don't know if that's the generators or what. A lot of smoke coming out from up top. And impact. I mean, that thing just went down like nothing. Wow. Imagine this would have happened in the middle of the day. School bus, whatever, you know. Or even just more early, uh, you know, later in the morning hours. And if you see that, these lights emanating from the top, are those the construction workers they're talking about? The early morning hour construction workers? Around here at the top. That's got to be so scary. Like, you, you have no time to react. You don't know what the hell is going on. But at the same time, 
in your head you're like there's no way this sh- this bridge is going down you just never imagine a bridge collapsing it and it's collapsing like I, I just can't imagine in the few seconds that you have to even can't even react Yeah. I think those are the construction workers' vehicles. That's what it looked like. I don't know. I could be wrong, but. Wow. are uh, essentially following this breaking story that we have been following all throughout the morning a bridge collapse you can see right now to the left side of your screen that is where we just had that news conference wrap up moments ago over to the right side of your screen the top right is kind of a side angle zoomed in and it shows the bridge on top of that container ship that slammed into it a bit earlier on now the bottom right hand side of your screen that is an aerial view of the situation provided by our Fox 5 DC team as they are out there. I do want to take you to their latest report here. Melanie Almwick speaking here and just kind of providing the latest details after that briefing. Uh, Talking about what is happening now, what will happen next, but uh, as you heard him say, still too early to tell a lot of the questions as far as the investigation, what might have caused it, did the ship lose power, and then of course what happens after the rescue operations are complete and they're able to to work on the investigation. I mean, there's so much going on, and I mean, look at the Boeing airplanes, all the issues with the Boeing airplanes, all the uh, catastrophes happening. (laughs) Lauren here said, remember how y'all created a terrorist conspiracy theory when there was a car accident at the Canada slash U.S. border, and y'all were wrong? Might want to wait for details on the Baltimore Bridge. Not a lot, and certainly not what I think we were hoping to hear. Like uh, Transportation Secretary Paul Wiedefeld had a ton of information that he was willing to share. U.S. Coast Guard did not take questions. They only uh, made a statement there. Uh, so we heard a lot more detail, actually, from the, the press conference that happened earlier with the Baltimore Fire Chief and with Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott. But what we can say is that uh, this is all still under investigation. Many people asked questions about why the FBI presence would be here and whether there was any indication that this may be an intentional act. Transportation Secretary Paul Wiedefeld saying that uh, there is no indication at this point, but this is a standard part of the investigation. Again, we know that the crew is still on board the ship. And one little detail we did get is that that ship was uh, under the control of what they call a pilot. So there are pilots that bring the cargo ships in and out of the port of Baltimore before the captain then takes over control of the uh, of the cargo ship. So according to them, it was a pilot. So someone who should have had a lot of experience coming in and out of the port of Baltimore. No indication again as to why perhaps this might have happened. Um, We don't know if, you know, people are looking at videos and they're saying they can see where the ship suffered maybe a catastrophic loss of power and then ran into those pylons. I asked Secretary Wiedefeld about this another image to that raw alerts posted a video i should say it almost looks kind of clear i think and if you look it zooms it zoomed in and then it zooms out we're right next to the key bridge what the fuck like all them people on the bridge just died dude oh my god This is the, the thing that I tell you that I, I think this was construction worker vehicles parked at least. Right next to the key bridge. See how it goes down? What the fuck? What like, the fuck? all them people on the bridge just died, dude. Oh 
Yeah, I think those are construction vehicles. I mean, had this been on a like the morning time rush hour or something, I don't know how how heavily traveled that vehicle the, the bridge is. You know, thankfully, it wasn't as many vehicles maybe as normal. Um, so far, they said possibly seven people missing. I don't know if that includes. Somebody said twenty workers. I, I you know, I don't, I don't, the numbers are just very fluid. We're not really sure. There's no real confirmation of anything besides two people being pulled out of the water. One person wasn't critical and refused medical treatment because they weren't injured, and the other person is in serious condition at the hospital. The key bridge. Oh, it's pretty wild to see. Oh, really? Pam said someone said 11,000 cars passed over a day pass over. Yeah, had this been like at any other time of the day. You know, it would have been even worse than it already is. Collapse. As Melanie said, we do expect another news conference around 9 a.m. Eastern time. We'll make sure to bring that to you right here on Live Now from Fox. For now, I do want to head to a quick two minute commercial break. On the other side, we're going to play out that news conference from earlier on this morning where they do provide a little bit more in the way of details as to what happened and what happens next. That's coming up in two short minutes. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to call it for now and try to rest a little bit. Uh, there is, I, I moved the, and I got to find all the links again. Ruby Frank is husband or ex-husband. The, the second interview to continue off of yesterday. So that's what we're going to do later in the afternoon. But I think for now, I'm going to get a little bit of rest, take a little nap. Um, and there's a few things I got to do around the house when I wake up too. So. I'll take care of a few things, but I, I will transfer you to the new stream later so we can watch that and then just be kind of on call for whatever else pops up today. Let me uh, set the thing, whether it's Diddy, whether it's some chase, whether whatever's going on. I will let some of the notifications reset. But uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Stay safe. And uh, Bye. Bloop, bloop, bloop.